We've got a variety of things happening today. It's finally warm enough that I can wear a shirt like this outside. Snow is melting kind of slowly, but I'm out here cleaning up this mess, removing this snow. Mark and I are going to put a caterpillar tunnel right down here. And in fact, we're going to be changing over all of our low tunnels to caterpillar tunnels. Cause I don't know if you guys have followed this, but uh, I, uh, one of the one of the subscribers pointed out this channel to me and I can't think of the name of the channel or the subscriber But this channel talks about weather patterns based on sunspots And I kind of went down a rabbit hole when this guy sent this to me because I made a comment about the farmers almanac one of our videos in one of the last videos and He's like, oh, you got to check out the sunspots So I looked at this channel and I looked at did some of my own research and it's very interesting The Sun is going through this sort of long phase of sunspots where it's predicting that our winters are going to get colder and longer until 2030. I don't think it means that we're going to have winter in the summer, but I I have kind of suspected this trend for a number of years because at least for the last four years, my winters here have been getting colder and longer, and even our summers are a little bit a little bit cooler than normal. So I'm kind of looking at this trend now and just going, okay, adapt and move forward. So going to be changing up, up a lot on the farm this year, uh, and particularly with our season extension. So I'm going to take a season off the low tunnels. I might use them in parts during the spring and maybe when there's times with no snow, but I'm going to start using caterpillar tunnels. So I've got a big order from Farmer's Friend coming and uh, got 300 feet of cat tunnels showing up. And those are going to be six 50 foot tunnels that are going to be spread out throughout our farm. One 50 foot one is going to go here two at another plot, one at another plot, maybe one in my front yard. I don't know where they're all gonna go yet. Uh, well, I kinda do, but anyways, that's what we're gonna be doing. So right now, I'm just moving this snow out of the way, and I don't care to get it all out of the way, and Mark and I, as soon as these things arrive, are gonna put one down here and let that um, help melt the snow faster. So that's what I'm doing right now. Mark is in the greenhouse right now, kind of finishing off this lettuce and tomato interplant in the greenhouse. Pretty long, but the fabric is... Are those tricky to get in there, Mark? Nope, not too bad, just sort of dangle the greens. Dangle in. They're a little bit lanky because we left them in the plugs too long, but that's life. Yeah. They'll probably leave a lot of those anyway. So we've had some epic problems with aphids over this winter. I've mentioned this in other vlogs. So tried one reactionary solution, that sprayer there. We sprayed uh, organic product called Safer Soap on the tomatoes, because that's where the aphids were going for, is the tomatoes. And I've never seen that before. But um, so that was the first thing. So we're gonna see how that works over the next few days. But I've also got 3,000 ladybugs expected to even show up today, maybe today. And I talked to an agronomist who said that that should be enough for this greenhouse and the other one. So I wanted to try something different than the parasitic wasps this time. The aph the the uh, what I like about the ladybugs as opposed to the wasps is that they eat the aphids. They consume the whole thing. Where the wasp stings the aphid and lays eggs in it and so even when those eggs hatch you have this cocoon of um, the hollowed out aphid shell there and since we have lettuce in here I don't want that on my lettuce I'd rather the ladybugs just eat them and the other thing that I had found out about ladybugs is that you can keep them alive for a period of time because you can just keep putting little bowls of sugar in the greenhouse or little apple cores and they can survive off that where the wasps really only survive off the aphids so if you want to keep that predator-prey balance going, you have to keep feeding the wasps by introducing aphids into the greenhouse somehow, and so that's a bit complicated. So I think the ladybugs, they sound like a better solution, so we'll see how that works. I'll keep you guys posted. Another thing I'm going to be doing today is some microgreen trials. So all this talk about microgreens, I've got a video coming out relatively soon with a guy named Yotam in New Zealand who I visited, and uh, he really inspired me with his microgreen production and I was teaching a workshop about it last weekend. So I've been kind of re-inspired to do some different types of microgreens. So I've got a variety of different seed um, that I'm gonna be trying and I'll save that for another video. I'll make a video on it specifically. Maybe that will come out the next day, but I'm going to be 
just doing some different trials at, at different densities and kind of recording those densities and I'll, I'll do that in another video but that's also what I'm doing today. But for the rest of this day, I'm gonna be out moving snow and making room for these tunnels. So besides from that, cleaning that stuff up, I'm gonna get in here and harvest some of my carrots. I'm just gonna harvest what I need and in fact, I'm not gonna uncover this completely because uh, I'd rather keep this at least partially on if we get another snowfall because that'll just damage the carrots. So I wanna keep them from getting turned into mush, even though they might already be partially mush. We'll see. But that's it for the day, guys. I'm just going to clean this stuff up a little bit more and then get in the greenhouse and do some microgreen trials. All right, we'll talk to you later.